Hello and welcome to Easy Tech Time. So today we will find another reason to fire up the 3D printer. I have some SD cards and USB sticks laying around and I really need a way to organize them. So I watch a guy on YouTube called Barnacles Nerdgasm and he actually printed one of these things. And the great thing about it is that it is customizable. You can see I got my name here. This is not something I created. It is something that is on Thingiverse that you can just put some parameters into and you can get it pretty much like you want it. I will put the link to this in the description. And if you open this, you can click this link down here and make your own. And if you want to actually know how this customizer works, Mr. Barnacles here did a very nice tutorial on how to use it. And you can also watch his video. And he also has a lot of 3D printing videos. So if you're into that kind of stuff, I can recommend you to check out his channel. And he is also a pretty funny guy, so you won't get bored, I can promise you. But what you do is you just click this link here. And wait for it. And you just fill in all the stuff that you want and press create thing. And after a couple of minutes, it will appear in your my things. You can see that up here. And you can download it and print it. As simple as that. And again, this item is originally created by Bell Fry, if that is how you pronounce it. And we will just do a bit of multi-computering here because I have the MakerWare on my laptop. We want to go ahead and download this thing, and I've already done that. And we just want to drag that into MakerWare. Like that. And perhaps move it to the front a little bit so we can see it a bit easier when we're printing. Just like that. We want to export the file. And we're using the right extruder. We'll set that to PLA. We'll take, let's say, 25% infill. Number of shells. Let's do rule 3. And the layer height is 0.1 millimeter. That's just fine. And we will set it to 215 degrees Celsius. And this is just a kind of a guess. I haven't perfected this yet. And the speed we will leave at 90 millimeters per second. And we want to go and export this file. So this time I want to try out some PLA and we'll have to get the printer ready for that. As you can see there is nothing on the print bed there. And if you have seen my previous video you saw that I teared the tape completely when I tried to remove the phone stand that I was printing. I have printed PLA before but when I did that I also used the Captain tape on the print bed and applied glue stick on top of that to make the PLA stick. But I have seen other people use painter's tape, so I will try that this time, now that the Captain tape is destroyed anyway. Well, let's get started. So let's see how tricky it is to get this uh, tape aligned, because I'll have to do multiple strips of it. And three strips of tape almost covers the entire bed. There's just about five millimeters left here, but I can live with that. 
Now I just have to make sure that it is pressed down really good so it won't peel off when we're printing. And while you are standing up there on the table, we might as well put a spool of PLA on here because this black one is ABS. And I hope that the red will kind of fit with the rest of the things that I have in the room, even though this is a much lighter red. So I don't know how that will look, but we will find out. We want to undo the nut here. And tighten it back up. And since this is a brand new spool, we will just uh, kind of cut the filament a bit further down here so we don't get this bent piece of filament to uh, get stuck in the printer. And we just lift this tube here and and trying to avoid the filament spooling itself out. And this is actually easier when there's not a camera in the way. <laughs> Oh, I didn't notice that my uh, zip tie got stuck in the spool here. That was not the intention. But we did manage to get it through to the other side here. So, we want to turn on the printer. And there's a switch on the back. And and sorry, it is a bit loud. We want to go to the utilities, change filament, and just load right. And it says, please wait while I heat my extruder. And I think you might just be able to see that there's still a little bit of an old clear filament left in here and we'll have to wait for it to extrude that before we can insert the new filament. Okay. And you can see it started to extrude the clear filament now. And we can soon start to feed in the red, we have to do that now. And here we go. And we can see it is starting to become a little bit more red. So I'll just have to let it extrude in a couple of tens of centimeters. And once we have put the tube back in, we are almost ready. Now I just have to Pull out the SD card and go grab the file. And I just grabbed the file that we created and we are ready to rock and roll. And we have a problem because it 
print head is too close to the bed so it is clicking over. It cannot extrude the filament so we will have to fix that. And of course I should have checked that before I started to print, now that we have changed the tape on the bed. And we'll just need to peel this off again. So I just printed one layer and adjusted it while it was printing. I find that is the most accurate way to do it because uh, with PLA it has to be fairly precise. You can see over here it actually didn't stick at all. And if you get too close to the platform it won't extrude. And let's fire it up again. And if you can actually hear anything for the printer, this is a good example why a single extruder printer actually can be better. If you see, the printer made a little booger over here, and when the next nozzle travels over that, it will actually duplicate it over here. And over here, again, when the second nozzle travels over the second bump. And if you're printing across the entire bed, you can actually make five or six of these across and they're just getting smaller and smaller as you go. If this had been a single extruder, it wouldn't have done that, it would only have made the first one. So as you can see it doesn't like to stick to this masking tape at all. It might be because I'm not using 3M masking tape, but uh, this is just some cheap stuff that I found at the hardware store. When I was using the Capton tape it uh, stick down pretty well if I use glue stick so I can try that on the masking tape as well just to see if we can actually get the print going so now that the glue stick ain't tacky anymore we will try again And this actually looks much better so far. And let's just speed this up a bit. It is about 70 times playback speed. And as I said, it is looking pretty nice so far. The bottom layers here are solid, of course, so it will make a surface for it to stand on. And the pattern that you see on the right, that's a honeycomb pattern. And that is just to save filament, so it won't fill the item completely inside. It is still pretty rigid, and you can adjust how much infill you want, so you can adjust it from, say, 10 to 100%. And you can see it's starting to make the 
bottoms of the slots for the USB sticks and the SD cards now. And it is printing a solid section around those so, uh, so you don't accidentally break into the honeycomb. I will see if I can pick up some of that 3M masking tape and see if that will work better than this. Because I have seen a lot of videos on YouTube where they use this blue masking tape, but it is all from uh, 3M. So that might do the trick. You can also use the uh, Captain tape and just apply the glue stick as I did to this masking tape, and that will work as well. But the captain tape is a little bit harder to apply. And as you can see, we're almost done with the inscription. And this item is actually turning out pretty good. And we are almost done. And as you can see, the glue stick really makes a very strong bond between the tape and the plastic. There was really no way I could peel it off without actually destroying the tape again. Oops. Okay guys, so here it is, the finished print. And as you can see, it came out pretty nice. I haven't done anything to this after it came off the printer. And you can see this. Not much to complain about really. You can see on the bottom here I still have the residue of the glue stick and the tape left over. And the only imperfections there is actually is in the text here where these focus. Thank you, camera. Well, we can see these tiny strings here, but they actually just scrape off. So you can just clean up all the letters and it will look perfect, I guess. So I just went and scraped it with a knife and ran a flame over it to remove all the white parts. And I stayed a little too long in this area here with the flame. You can see it's a little bit dark but it is actually looking much worse on the camera than it is in real life I guess if I do like this it looks kind of like what I see and the tape and glue stick just removed with water so let's see if the stuff actually fits in there so let's start with the SD cards And that's a perfect fit. So let's try a few different USB sticks. 
no problem. And I actually have this funny little one here. I don't think that will fit because it's not a uh, there's no frame on this USB connector. It's just the the bare connector. So it definitely is a bit loose in here. No, it doesn't fit. So only for the full USB connectors. And I actually have this SD card reader as well. So let's try to see if we can fit that. That's also a perfect fit. And I have actually got four of these USB flash drives, but uh, the reason why I printed this is I always misplace them, so I actually don't know where they are. But I guess I'll find them and I can finally place them in there. 